Griffy. Griff. <laughs> I think he's really sleeping. Hey guys, Scott from Drill Adventures here. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to be spending two days through remote Canadian wilderness, traveling downstream, a river that's very flooded, potentially dangerous on some of the rapids where there's no room for forgiveness if uh, we're traveling downstream. It's very quick, and sometimes you make the wrong move, you make the wrong decision, you could end up going down some uh, rapids that you don't want to. And, and I mean, Realistically, it's potentially fatal. So uh, that's not going to happen, but um, we have to be on our toes on this one. <laughs> Believe it or not, Griff's uh, sleeping in the front and he's 12 years old. It's a hard trip. There's nothing uh, fake about this trip. It's, uh, you know, nine days in remote wilderness. I mean, kids don't usually do this his age, you know, hiking. We're going to be hiking, uh, what, 14 kilometers. Um, you know, today we're going to be covering some portages of 700 meters, 1400 meters, I think. Um, he's carrying two backpacks, so uh, and he's paddling all day. So, you know, it's a it's a tough trip. It's a tough trip for adults, let alone a 12 year old boy. So I hope you like watching it. This is, uh, you know, to me it's just heaven being up here. Just absolute heaven. Me and Griff got a pretty exciting summer planned. By the time you watch this video, you've probably um, already heard I. I was planning to announce it that uh, Griffey and I are going to Woodland Caribou Provincial Park and we're going to Wabakimi Provincial Park. And it's going to be a train in, fly in, fishing trip. It's, um, it's going to be amazing. Wabakimi is a, a train in, fly out trip and Woodland Caribou will be a um, fly in, fly out trip. And what's going to make that even extra special is um, Griffey and I will be doing it uh, for the full two weeks. My father-in-law and his brother Randy are going to join us in Wabakimi. They're not quite up for portaging and sleeping in tents, but uh, they are going to sleep in a cabin right off the tracks. So we're going to, they're going to take the train in with us and uh, they get to kind of experience the whole trip with Griff and I. And then Griff and I will take off with our canoe and tents and we will uh, explore Wabakimi Provincial Park. And we'll come back and uh, we'll get a flight out which is uh, pretty amazing. So I'm really looking forward to that. My father-in-law is a pilot. So it's kind of special to, uh, f to him to be able to fly out in a bush plane, not only spend time with me, but uh, his grandson, right? Which is pretty cool. So really looking forward to that. And then when Wabakimi's done, Griff and I will head to Thunder Bay, where I'm gonna pick up my oldest son, Pierce, and my buddy, Mike. And uh, Mike has been dying to go on, on one of these trips. And he's an outdoors guy. And uh, he's really excited to go to Woodland Caribou. We're gonna spend all week in Woodland Caribou. And uh, Pierce is uh, excited to do that too, do some fishing. And uh, Pierce is type 1 diabetic, so if you're watching this and you know somebody or you're type 1 diabetic, uh, don't let that hold you back. If you've watched my videos, Pierce has been in lots of my videos. Um, before I had a YouTube channel, I was taking Pierce on the trips that Griffey's doing. Like, Pierce has been in Algonquin Park for eight days uh, with an insulin pump. So don't ever let that uh, hold you back. There's some challenges. It's a little more challenging for sure, a little more stressful for me. Um, but uh, never let uh, that hold him back from doing any adventures with me. So it's going to be pretty exciting. But this trip's not done. We got a two hard days still. Um, ironically enough, the easy days we were supposed to have on this trip were um, the weather was bad. It wasn't really as enjoyable as planned, but again, that's how these trips go. So these two days, um, I don't know what it is with my luck, but when it comes time to travel and, and long portages by the end of these trips, um, the heat always seems to show up and uh, we're going to have maybe some hot weather, which, uh, you know, which will be fine because we've been kind of cold lately. There's a lot of snow in the bush and that sort of thing. So a little bit of sunshine won't be a bad thing. 
We're going to be coming up to our first rapid soon, first portage. We'll, uh, we'll get that knocked off. And because we're going downstream, we'll be fishing at the, uh, the end of the portage, right? Bring it over here. Bring it over here. There we go. Yay! I told you, get one. There you go. Do some more casting. Yeah, yeah. Nice little brook trout. There we go. There we go, buddy. Oh. See? I miss it. See, I told you, oh, get one. I miss this so much. You gotta be patient, buddy. You gotta be patient. Okay, we're at the rapids, Cedar Rapids, on the Petawawa River, and I'm in a precarious spot here. I'm just hanging on. The water's high, so I'm just hanging on to some trees here. Okay, Griff, the fishing's been slow, but we caught three brook trout at that last creek. This is going to be our dinner tonight. Way to go, buddy. What do you think? Oh, uh, I am excited because I haven't caught a fish with a fishing hook yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> we caught our catfish in the net, but now yeah. got a nice brook trout. So we're going to throw them in and. Uh, Go get start paddling and we're gonna go have some dinner in a little bit, okay? Right. Way to go, buddy. I'm really proud of you. <laughs> wow! Broke the turn. Wes! That is a nice one. Nice! You wanna do the honors? Get it out. Look at that. Well done, buddy. Well that was worth the effort. Yep. Oh, yeah. oh. Would you want to bring it on shore? So yeah, let's bring him on shore. <laughs> There we are. Nice. Well, I'm going to take uh, a video now. Congratulations, Wes. Thank you. And I'm going to take a picture. Hold on here, Wes. Okay. We just uh, are on the next portage on the Petawawa. Griffey just caught three brook trout at Cedar Rapids. And as a dad, the pressure is off me because I was very stressed. I wanted to catch some fish. We go all this way and things weren't working out this trip so I'm very happy that uh, we got to catch some fish and one one nice brook trout we're going to keep for uh, dinner tonight Bill caught one earlier so two brook trout for four of us is lots we have dehydrated meals still and uh, so today's Tuesday we're going to be camping on Catfish Lake tonight tomorrow we're going to uh, camp on Cedar Lake, so tomorrow will be another full travel day. It's amazing how the snow is gone from this portage. We came through here six days ago, something like that, and uh, there's a foot of snow in here. So it's amazing uh, how that's disappeared with all the rain. It's not exactly like it's been warm. It's been really, really cold. I mean, the last two days, sitting around camping, just above freezing temperatures with wind. It's not been uh, it's not been the best trip. They're all fun. But let's face it, some are better than others. That's what makes it interesting, that's what makes it an adventure. So if you're gonna do these things, you gotta be prepared to take the good with the bad. You need the bad to appreciate the good. So do kids. You know, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for Griff. He's he's gotta know that hey, you know, last year he caught I don't know, eight lake trout, nice ones, you know, brook trout as well, I think, he caught some, and, uh, you know, last year everything went right, 
Weather was great, warm. Every night we looked at the stars. So that's not how these trips go. If you do them long enough. And I always like that. I've done them a long time. I enjoy everything about it. And I don't like sitting around camp. So I get stir crazy, so I gotta like cut down trees and stuff. But uh, dead trees, mind you. I've never cut down a live tree here. <sighs> so, but today's very comfortable, sun's out. I'm not sure what the temperature is, but it's maybe 10 degrees. I, I got my waders on. I was hoping to do some fly fishing, but the water was way too high. And it just, nah, wasn't in the cards. I could have just brought my water pants. Um, yeah, but it's, it's comfortable. I, it's amazing, eh? Oh, really, eh? And then maybe bring him packs or something. Oh, okay. Okay, okay thanks. Yeah. So, even though the snow is gone, the water's there, I guess. So, probably like the Westerners just tell me there's about a foot of water in that spot. So, for me, it's great. Chris just got some waterproof hiking boots on, and they'll be over his foot, so I'll have to carry him. I don't want him getting wet. He was, uh, he got wet last time, and all right, he's waiting for me here, so I say goodbye and uh, uh, carry Griff across all this stuff. Yeah. Do you know where my knife is? Do I? Yeah. Yep, yeah, right there. That's a whining sound. Is that your, your photo equipment stuff? No, that's a pump. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's in this video. Yeah. I don't remember him offering to, uh, you know, hey guys, I've got a pump. Can oh. I pump yours up as well? It's funny that Wes said, did you watch the video? See, if you only watch the videos that you're in, you're not going to learn any important information. I watch, I watch all of them. I mean, it's like, well, I haven't offered it to you because I'm not going to use that for work. Yes, yeah. And then 320. It goes in the count. Yeah, I know. I just... Uh... Uh, three, three, no, 345. So catching fish is the fun part in Algonquin uh, Park. That's the Yours. first The responsible one. thing to do as an angler uh, in Algonquin to is to complete no. the fishery survey. We always make a point of taking one with us and we make a point of documenting what we catch and where we catch it at. Not as hard as this. Um, the park supplies you with the survey, this. with pencil, yeah, with so measuring tape, with everything you need to complete the survey and they really appreciate you putting the effort into doing it. I told you before? So I really am an advocate of that. So if you ever go to Algonquin Park, if you ever go to any so park that again. has a, a fishing survey Cut and you plan on doing some fishing, the least you can do is actually fill the survey. that one was before? This one, watch this. That's it. Whereas the other one, it, uh, it stays wanting to hook hooked up to that. Um, yeah, I think this is Can yours. Can I cut it? Can I cut this? Sure. Just whoop, slow down. Grab it with your right hand. Um, He's lefty. Oh, you're a lefty. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Just don't go deep and run it right along. And don't get my fingers. Okay, I'll just show you how it feels. You're kind of doing a little sawing action, pulling up the whole time, so that cuts right up the middle. There you go. Now pull that away. What I'll do. Yep, so I'm gonna grab the gills. You know what? I'm gonna take the front pectorals off at the same time. I wonder what that fish has been eating. Other little fish? Good point. Is that its stomach? Um yes. There you go. Hold on to that again. You can maybe crack that open. It'd be cool for So then grab it from here, pull that. And look at that, all in one piece for the seagulls. And that's it. And now we go clean that uh, bloodline, and this one can go right in the tinfoil. There we go.
So that's, I, all I do is just keep running my thumb back and forth along it. In there. All right, Bill. You know, what was that? An 18 inch uh, brook trout? Um, or you guys measure it? It was in millimeters, right? Um, I think it was 18. Yeah, it looked about 18. It was 460. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Graf. Okay. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, pretty good eye. Nice. So yeah, that's a nice brook trout. So we're, Bill just gutted that, and we're throwing it on the coals. Yep. Yeah, gut, gut, gill. Gut and gill. Yep. Going in the coals. The other two were 12 and a half and nice. Um, 13 and a half. Okay. Time? Seven minutes aside, so uh, that's a. Uh, if you can. Well, it's going to be right in the middle, right? So. Yeah, flip, flip it though. It's okay. still because there's more heat on one side. Yeah. Just a flesh wound. Oh, yeah. Food. Our three brook trout are wrapped up in tin foil, sitting in the coals, 15 to 10 minutes, and then uh, they'll be ready to go. We got a dehydrogen meal going with the Kelly kettle, and that's going to be our dinner tonight. Why don't you throw the fry pan on the top of it? I think we're ready to go. So Bill and Wes are just out fishing. Me and Griff got the hobo stove going. I'm gonna heat up some salami as our snack. You get the summer sausage, summer salami, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't need refrigeration. It's great on its own, but you want to kick it up a notch, uh, heat it up over a fry pan, and the flavor comes out. It's amazing. Oh yeah, perfect. Oh, it's bubbling. Give me that one. Such a good boy. <laughs> it was hot. Oh, I Ooh. was sizzling. I told you. <laughs> Not to do it, but hey, give it to your cravings. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, so good. Mmm, that is so good. Mm -hmm. Right when they get like Valentine's velvet pink, <laughs> like yeah. that's when you straight. That's when it's a, a sweet spot. Yep. Mmm, mm, these are good. Wow. Well, Thank you. Welcome. Careful with the knife. Careful. Mmm. Well, Griff, that was definitely worth making a fire for. Very dangerous high water. Catfish in Narrow Bag Lake. This is the portage. We just finished the big portage on the Petawawa, 2,700 meters, I think, and uh, it's starting to rain. This has pretty much been the summary of the trip. Lots of rain, and uh, Griffey's doing all the paddling, and I'm doing all the recording. So he's a great 12-year-old. Got a lot of fun. It's, this has been probably one of the harder trips we've ever had. So um, I'm gonna put this camera away, and we're gonna get a little more paddling in until we get to the next portage. We got a 300 and a 700 left to Cedar Lake, and to the truck. We're gonna skip a portage here and run a little bit of a, a rapid. It's pretty, it's pretty tame.
Uh, it's just a, that's just a stick. Okay, you, now you just pay attention. If I tell you to paddle a certain direction, that means you to paddle, right? This is a pretty tame one. Yes, that would have been. Oh, well, like usual, I'm the last one heading back on the portage. I'm either putzing around with camera stuff or Bill and Wes are always ahead of us and I'm helping Griff get going and then he gets going. I'm usually the last one. So we just got to Cedar Creek. This is going to, uh, this is going to end our trip. This is the second carry on this portage. So I'm just going back with no gear to grab my backpack. And I uh, just wanted to say thanks for watching all these videos. It was really, really nice running across uh, subscribers in the park here. It's my second year having my channel. June 3rd will actually be my uh, two year anniversary. And um, running into so many people who watch my videos is uh, very cool. It's very humbling. It's an honor to have people uh, you know, give me compliments on uh, how they enjoy them. So, when I'm carrying the camera bag when I don't have to. It's nice to, uh, to know people appreciate the videos. The guys out here in the park, guys and girls, who are out here doing the trips, they know how much work it is, they know how rugged it is. So I think you generally appreciate the work that goes into making these videos. It's, uh, it's a rugged park. It's wilderness with a little organization. Good maps, you know, good trails. But don't, uh, this is not Central Park. This is uh, wilderness. There's bears, moose, wolves. No cell signal. You're on your own out here. You will run into some people depending on where you are, what time of year. But you need to, to have some skills to be out here. It's not, uh, it's not for everybody. You can hear the rapids here. The Petawawa. It's historically high water levels at this time. It's been flooding. We paddled upstream and then downstream on the Petawawa. I would say it's uh, definitely for advanced paddlers. There's some portages where if you weren't a strong paddler or really an experienced canoeist, you can you have a very real possibility of, of going down some white water and getting yourself hurt really bad because the high water makes it tougher to get to the portage entrances. Ooh, my arms are getting sore. Oh. Like I said, I'm heading back. I gotta grab my pack. Thank you uh, for all watching. Thank you all for watching. Like I said, I gotta get back put my pack on. I'm almost there. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all your support. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe for more videos. There's some coming out all the time. And please hit that like button on any of my videos if you enjoy them. I really appreciate that as well. Cheers. We got another one in the books. All right, our trip's officially coming to an end. There's my white truck on the beach. There's Bill and Wes pulling their canoe out. Griff. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. It's always uh, fun to go on trips. It's fun to wrap it up too.